and we could. Uh oh. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. It's starting to get sketchy now, man. <laughs> I think it's up in the air. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's look for the for the clues. <laughs> oh, you need more clues? Okay. Um, let's see. We couldn't do much about it until the security got here. It was a five. He got here and he locked the, the door and he got everybody out. And then the people kept coming to, to the door and knocking on the door and like hitting it hard. Fred Woods lives nearby and called police after seeing trail riders, ATVs, and the large crowds of people as he tried to get uh -oh. home. Or they were just. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, yeah, that's it's y'all, Chief. I'm sorry. That's man. us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's us, man. Uh, we ride horses and shit. What the fuck? Salute to the sound people, man. Y'all invented horses too, I heard. Damn, yeah, we did, man. Thank you for recognizing that too, man. At home. Or they were just uh, overrun, overrunning the neighborhood. You know, uh, overrunning the community, completely mean, they... stopping all traffic on the street, which spilled over into the community, causing um, havoc as well as uh, a, a safety issue. The next day, our cameras captured similar chaos as Oh, man, that big old Negro on that damn horse, man. Yo, that's... Yo, somebody called the called SPCA or some shit, <laughs> man. <more> God, yo, <laughs> big old son, man, man. Damn. Yeah. Chaos as police tried to shut down a large block party off War Copy Road. Wood. Oh, damn. Yeah. Yeah, it's official. Woo! It's official. Yo, Yo what, what, what you say? I were there are three. <laughs> that looks more than three. Right there. Man, there are three thousand. That's a place, God. Hey, salute to Run Daz, man. Gifting the Op Nation membership. LB Ridges. All those spellers are bitch. Yeah, man. Whatever you got to do to beat the algorithm. Yeah, fuck. I know YouTube. they be. You two be trying to make it hard for y'all to come. Yeah, they make it hard for me ah, too. Crazy. Hot fire in this bitch once again. Um, let's make sure y'all hitting the like button too. Um, listen, man, it appeared, man, like from the beginning, man. I ain't even gonna lie, man. Houston horses, La, whatever La Pata, whatever the fuck it's called. I, <laughs> I was like, okay, this is a this is an on burrito situation, man. It's slowly, slowly, but slowly. I was right. Once I heard they stealing out the store, I was done. You needed more. I, yeah, right I, needed. I was like, oh, it's done. Because I could see, I could see, you know, some of burritos, you know, anything, anything sunny like that. But, you know, I, it's a place. Shit. My God. There's a lot of stuff. Coffee yeah. road. Wood spoke out during city council asking that an ordinance be enforced. All I'm looking for is responsibility, right? Take responsibility if you want to have a large party. City council member Abby Kamen says the city did pass an ordinance last term regarding large pop-up block parties. This is one of those examples where um, we should follow this through to the end. We have started that work. We have been acting on that work. And this is one of those that we need to look at to see if there's an enforcement mechanism retroactively uh, because this shouldn't be happening. And council member came in, did say that that ordinance does not include horses, but of course they are looking into this. And I've also reached out to HPD and they told me that this is a problem in Northeast Florida or Northeast Houston, these large parties. And they also say that there is a requirement before having these parties. We'll talk about that coming up at six and what they're doing to combat the issue. Look, look the fact that nobody got gunned down, that's a win. Right, right. What are they complaining about? This this <laughs> thing you sent me, um, Christy, is the Black Inventors list. Black invention of oh, Black invention myths. I said list. Okay. Because yo, I that that picture, right? That picture of all those some people. We, you and I both know for a fact there was a lot of guns in that crowd. A lot of guns. A uh, lot of. MC. 
a lot of problems. A lot of good niggas. A lot of guns, man. It was it was more guns than a motherfucker in that water. Shit. You talking about um we just it's just a miracle, man. Maybe maybe they was all friends. I don't know what the fuck. Whenever yeah. sons don't well, kill each other. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, maybe maybe that maybe that's the turning point. Maybe maybe we're on the up and up now. You know, this this is it. Study nah, this nah. group, man. We need to get them and and, and put them in under super research. research. <laughs> put them in the lab. <laughs> put, put them in the lab and start doing. Put on the coats and start yeah, doing. Yeah, we need to research these people, man. The we need to clone them. Yeah, man. What the hell's going on? <laughs> I mean, I'm saying though, why can't it be like that? Like, just be like that. I mean, I, I get it. They're gonna let it, right? Fuck it, let it. But you don't gotta fucking shoot the bitch out, though. Well, I mean, if if Pookie looked at me funny, you know what I mean. I can't be letting people think that you can yeah. look at me funny. Right. Now you must die. <laughs> yeah, man. If everybody think that they can look at me funny, then, then you know what I'm saying. Like, shit. You're done. Yeah, I'm done. It's a wrap. I can't live in peace. Black invention myths, man. The traffic signal invented by Garrett A. Morgan. No. The first known traffic signal appeared in London in 1868 near the Houses of Parliament. Designed by J.P. Knight. It featured two semaphore arms and two gas lamps. Wow. Um, Garrett Morgan's cross-shaped crank-operated semaphore was not among the first half a hundred patented traffic signals. <laughs> God, I mean, black folk teach about Garrett A. Morgan. He's a hero. Well, at least back in the, the 80s, you know, now it's like you don't really hear about him no more, but I grew up thinking he was good. You know, there's a, a two part video on YouTube where this guy debunks all of these uh, sun inventions that they claim that their sons did it. And he goes through them one by one and debunks them. The gas mask. Yeah, it couldn't have been invented in 1914. I mean, that's just very late, man. Um, he said the invention of the gas mask predates Morgan's breathing device by several decades. Early versions were constructed by the Scottish chemist John Stenhouse um, in 1854. Peanut butter. Oh, at least give us peanut butter. George Washington Carver, who began his peanut research in 1903. So they say that George Washington Carver didn't invent peanut butter? What the fuck? Peanuts, which are native to the New World tropics, were mashed into paste by Aztecs hundreds of years ago. The evidence of modern peanut butter comes from U.S. Patent 306727, issued to Marcellus Gilmore Edson of Montreal, Quebec in 1884 for a process of milling roasted peanuts between heated surfaces until the peanuts reached a fluid or semi-fluid state. As the product cooled, it set to what Edson described as a consistency like that of butter, lard, or ointment. In 1890, George A. Bell Jr., owner of food businesses in San Damn. So, George Washington Carver didn't invent peanut butter? Shit. My whole childhood was alive, man. It says, George Washington Carver discovered hundreds of new and important uses for, for the peanut. Fathered the peanut industry, revolutionized southern U.S. agriculture. No. Oh, shit. Most of Carver's peanut and sweet potato creations were either unoriginal, impractical, or of uncertain effectiveness. No product born in his laboratory was widely adopted. Four years for southern peanut production 
came prior to and not as a result of Carver's promotion of the crop. Carver's work to improve regional farming practices was not of pioneering scientific importance and had little demonstrable impact. Man, that sounds racist. But how did it, yeah, it says, to see how Carver gained a popular reputation far transcending the significance of his accomplishments. Oh, so I don't think you to, to, to know. I would love to know that because that was, that, that's, that's, yeah, how the fuck, why the fuck did they, mm, shit, George, what, that's, that's a heartbreaker? Yeah, that's a heartbreaker. This one, too, Charles Drew. He was a mulatto, Dr. Charles Drew, in 1940. They say he um, invented uh, blood plasma, um, preserved blood in a... Uh, oh, man. Saying a white guy did it 10 years earlier. Mm. Have you ever played that one video, though? Oh. What video? Oh, that debunks all these. It's it's plan. It says Benjamin Banneker, man. It says every there's a school named after Banneker, park, streets, apartment complexes. There's a lot of shit named after Benjamin Banneker in DC. It says Pierre Charles Lafont created the layout of Washington, DC. Banneker assisted Andrew Ellicott in the survey of the federal territory, but played no direct role in the actual planning of the city. The story of Banneker reconstructing the city design from memory after LaFont ran away with the plans has been debunked by historians. Yeah, that's what we learned. The, 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 the French dude called Attitude and left, and Banneker remembered it and and that's how they were able because DC is 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 um constructed in a certain way. Avenues and streets, the way it's constructed, is very unique. Man. Wow. Yo, but but if some people I believe that, you know, believe this, if they believe that a son man found in Chicago, how in the fuck, how <laughs> is this can this country be? How so has that been debunked? I mean, they, they say I haven't looked into it, but they said that he founded it or some shit. Uh, yeah, I heard racist, that. Yeah, how racist can this country have been that they're allowing the summit to do all this shit? Wow, the carbon filament. This is for the um, this is this is for the um, light for the light bulb. Oh man, I said <laughs> neither of Lattimore's two filament related patents in 1881 and 1882 were among the most important innovations, nor did they make the light bulb last longer, nor is there reason to believe they were adopted outside of Hiram Maxim's company where Lattimore worked at the time. He was not hired by Edison's company until 1884, primarily as a draftsman and expert witness in patent litigations. Wow. He did not come up with the screw socket for the light bulb. Or the first book on electric lighting. Damn. What the and then you have uh, you have uh, Biden on camera saying that I don't care what anybody says. Thomas Edison didn't invent the light bulb. A black man did. It's on camera him saying that. Wow. Yo, nothing. Well, this defense is a fucking moron, right? Yo, look at all this stuff. We the cellular phone. Henry T. Sampson, 1971, said on July 6, 1971, Sampson and co-inventor George Miley received a patent on a gamma electric cell that converted a gamma ray input into an electrical output. Among the first to do that was Bernard Gross in 1964. What, you ask, does gamma radiation have to do with cellular communications technology? The answer, nothing. <laughs> Some multiculturalist suedo historian must have seen the words electric and cell and thought cell phone. 
The father of the cell phone is Martin Cooper, who first demonstrated the technology in 1973. Oh, yeah, Benjamin Banneker, he didn't invent the clock either. The, the watch, I should have known that one. Fuck. Quaker clockmaker from Philadelphia did. This is disappointing, man. God damn it. We didn't invent anything according to this. The elevator, yeah. No, we didn't invent the elevator either. Shit. Damn. Um, 